This presentation is about how to write word equations for chemical reactions. So hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you should be able to state what reactants and products are. You should be able to write down a chemical reaction in the correct way. And you should be able to work out the names of basic products based on the names of the reactants. So the first question is, what is a chemical reaction? When a chemical reaction, atoms of different chemicals form bonds and join together. This makes new chemicals. So a chemical reaction is when you make new chemicals. Now, Obviously these atoms, these chemicals, are too small to see. You won't be able to see if bonds have been formed. So how will you be able to tell that a chemical reaction has taken place? Well, there's quite a few different signs. There could be a change of colour. Energy in the form of light or heat could be given off. There could be a change in temperature. Now we've already mentioned heat might be given off, which would raise the temperature. But in some chemical reactions, the temperature actually decreases. A smell could be produced. There could be a change in odour. Now this is normally normally occurs through gas being produced. However, this gas doesn't have to give a different smell. However, the production of any sort of gas is generally an indication that a chemical reaction has taken place. And the main one is a new chemical has been formed. Okay, so why do we use word equations to describe chemical reactions? Well, you could describe it like this. When the grey metal magnesium was picked up with a pair of tongs and heated it in the working flame of a Bunsen burner, a chemical reaction occurred. A reaction with oxygen caused a bright white light to be produced, and a crumbly white solid called magnesium oxide was formed. Now, in some cases, you will actually need to go into this much detail. If you're just describing a chemical reaction and you don't really know what's being produced, you'll have to describe it in terms of what's happening, what you can see, what you can smell. But generally, when scientists are describing chemical reactions, they just simplify it to the basics. What chemicals did we start with, and what chemicals did we end up with? So to simplify this paragraph, we can write a word equation. So magnesium reacted with oxygen, and magnesium oxide was formed. Now this doesn't give details such as what the magnesium oxide looks like, what you could see during the reaction, but it gives the basic details what went into the reaction and what was made in the reaction. So, how do we write word equations? Well, the first thing is that all the reactants, which are all the chemicals you start with, go on the left of the arrow, and all the products, which are the chemicals you end up with, go on the right of the arrow. Now you'll notice I've put the S in brackets. Sometimes you only have two, reac two reactants or even one. You might have more. So you could start with one reactant or many and you could end up with one product or many. So rules for writing word equations. The first one is that all the reactants go to the left of the arrow and all the products go to the right of the arrow. 
Now this may seem straightforward, but we're going to come back to this one in more detail in just a second. The second rule is that the arrow must be pointing from the reactants to the products as it's showing the direction of the reaction. What that means is you start with the reactants, you end up with the products, so the arrow must go from the reactants to the products. That means it must go from left to right. The third rule is that the arrow is an arrow. It's never an equal sign, which a lot of people have a tendency to put. So I said we'll come back to the first rule, that all of the reactants must go on the left of the arrow, and all of the products must go on the right of the arrow. Well, this seems like a simple rule, but when you're writing word equations in your exercise book, you can break this rule without really realising it. For instance, this is two ways of writing the same chemical reaction, in which hydrochloric acid and magnesium have reacted together to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. However, one of these word equations, word equations is incorrect. Can you work out which one it is? Well, it's the top one which isn't correct. Now, why isn't it correct? Well, if we look at the two reactions, they both contain exactly they're the same chemicals. But in the first one, the person has run out of room on their line. They've been writing the word equation, they've got to the end of the line, they haven't finished. So they've just carried on to the next one. So you see here, hydrogen, which is one of the products, is to the left of the arrow. Now this is incorrect. By writing this, it makes it look like hydrogen is a reactant, which it isn't. Now the second word equation, the person still doesn't have room on one line to write down the word equation. It's still gone onto two lines, but the person's fought ahead and they've written it so that hydrochloric acid and magnesium, which are the two reactants, are on the left of the arrow, and magnesium chloride and hydrogen, which are the two products, are to the right of the arrow. Now this is perfectly correct, even though it's over two lines. So hopefully by now, you should be able to recognise basic word equations and be able, start to be able to think of how to write them. Well, that's all well and good if you're told all of the chemicals. But what happens if you have to predict what the products are going to be? Now, we have specific ways of naming chemicals. Now you will come across a lot of chemicals in your school career which end in IDE. I -D -E. They have IDE at the end of their name. Now when you see this IDE, this means that atoms of different elements have joined together to make a new chemical. IDE means elements have joined together. So. For instance, magnesium oxide is when magnesium and oxygen have joined together to make a new chemical, which is magnesium oxide. So you can see in the chemical name that it contains magnesium and oxygen, and the IDE at the end means they're joined together. Magnesium sulfide means that magnesium and sulfur have joined together. You can see magnesium and sulfur are in the compound and IDE means they've joined together. So magnesium atom is joined to a sulfur atom. 
So what do you think magnesium chloride is made out of? Well, hopefully, some of you will have guessed that magnesium chloride is made out of magnesium and chlorine. So magnesium chloride contains magnesium and chlorine, and the IDE means an atom of magnesium is joined to an atom of chlorine. Now, you'll notice that in each of these chemicals, there's a metal joined to a non-metal. Now, when this is the case, you always write out the name of the metal in full, in this case, magnesium. And then the non-metal, the oxygen, the sulfur, or the chlorine, is shortened, and then IDE added at the end. You'll never see oxygen magneside written down, because that's not the correct way of writing it. You write metal and give it its full name, for instance magnesium, and then the non-metal it's joined to gets shortened, and then you put ID at the end. So, hopefully, you can now state what reactants and products are. You should know how to write down a chemical reaction in the form of a word equation and the correct way of doing this. And hopefully, you can start to predict the names of products where a metal has joined with a non-metal. So don't forget to fill out the worksheet so I know you've watched this presentation.